Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to the Holmesville Church of the Brethren. I'm Pastor Tim Amor from Beatrice Mennonite Church, and we'll also be hearing from Pastor Mary Beth Tuttle as our communities work together to celebrate this time of Advent. Advent, this time of waiting, of longing, of, of darkness, and looking ahead to the light. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you that you are good. Open our hearts to your love. Help us, Lord, to dream your dreams. Guide us in your ways. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Call to worship. The power of dreams lies in waking up, for when we close our eyes, we can see a better world. When we close our eyes, we can dream a better dream. But when we open our eyes, we begin the work of faith. The power of worship is the same. When we enter this space, we can see a better world. When we enter this space, we dream a better dream. But when we leave this space, we begin the work of faith. So come in, dream your dream. Find hope here. For in an hour, we will begin the work of faith. Let it be so. Original Dreamer over and over again in Scripture, we hear your dream for a beautiful world. We hear your dream for peace and reconciliation. We hear your dream for harmony and togetherness. We hear your dream for community and hope. So today we light the candle of hope, for hope is the very thing that keeps dreams afloat. May this light be an invitation to keep awake. May this light be our invitation to be Advent people, people who dream. Amen. This is The Other Wise Man by Henry Van Dyke. It has been retold by Pamela Kennedy and illustrated by Robert Barrett. The Other Wise Man In the days when Augustus Caesar was the ruler of many kings, including Herod, who reigned in Jerusalem, 
there lived among the mountains of Persia a certain man named Artaban. Artaban was one of the Magi, men who study the heavens in search of truth about God. He and three of his friends from far away had made a wonderful discovery. In the ancient writings, they had found a promise that at a special time, a beautiful new star would rise on the eastern sky. At the rising of that perfect star, a great king would be born. He would be the truth sent from the one God, the Son of the Most High. Artaban believed that the time was very near. He had sold his house and all he owned to buy three jewels to carry as gifts for the newborn king. Now as the sun began to set, Artaban reached into his colorful silk tunic and brought out the three great gems, a sapphire as blue as the Persian sky at night, a ruby as red as the first rays of sunrise, and a pearl as white and pure as the snow on a mountaintop at twilight. Artaban held the priceless gems together in his hands and gazed into the darkening sky. That was when he first saw the tiny spark on the horizon. He watched it grow larger and larger as it rose higher into the sky. Flashes of light surrounded the newborn star, gleaming with red and blue and purest white. It is the sign, exclaimed Artaban. The king is coming, and I will go to meet him. Artaban's three friends had said they would wait for him only ten days after sighting the star. He knew he must race to meet them at the temple of Babylon, or they would leave to seek the king without him. Quickly saddling Vasta, his fastest horse, Artaban galloped off, barely stopping for food or drink. He rode across brown mountain slopes and level green plains. He passed fields of nodding poppies and orchards of peaches and figs. He picked his way carefully over rocky mountain passes and crossed swirling rivers. Poor Vasta was exhausted and could hardly walk as night fell on the tenth day. But Artaban knew it was still three hours' journey to the meeting place and urged his horse onward. Suddenly, Vasta stopped as if afraid, and Artaban saw something in the road. He slid from his horse and approached the dark shape for a closer look. It was the body of a man. Artaban felt the man's forehead and listened for the sounds of breathing. The man seemed dead. But as Artaban turned to go, the poor man groaned, reached out one hand, and grasped the hem of the wise man's robe. The man was still alive. But Artaban saw that without help, the sick man could not live through the night. If Artaban nursed him, the man would recover quickly, but Artaban would be too late to meet his friends at the temple. Artaban turned his eyes toward the star he had been following and prayed, God of truth and light, show me the way of wisdom which only you know.
those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, men will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory, and he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Those who dream. Our Advent series this year is on those who dream. So when I say the word dream, what, what do you think of first? Do you think of those happy moments while you're sleeping? Maybe those strange moments. Why am I all of a sudden back in school and where have all my clothes gone? But dreams are more than what happens to us while we're sleeping. Those weird things in our minds. Dreams are also our, our hopes for the future. What do you dream of is the same as what do you hope for? What do you long for? How do you wish your life and the world could be? Advent, which is the season we're entering right now, leading up until Christmas, is this time of, of waiting, of waiting in the darkness, of waiting in hope. And so in a lot of ways, this is an especially appropriate celebration or remembrance during the time of COVID because it really feels like we are stuck waiting. We're stuck hoping. We're stuck dreaming of maybe what was and what could be. It is a difficult time for many of us. This week, we remember hope. We remember the hope that God isn't just God in the light. God is fully God in the darkness as well. So as we look at this series of those who dream, this morning we're going to talk about keeping awake. Those who dream, keep awake. What does that mean? Well, earlier we read from Mark chapter 13, and it's this passage that Jesus is speaking about this time where he will come again, where God will come and set everything right. We call it the fullness of God's kingdom will come to reign here on earth as it is in heaven. And this is how Jesus ends that passage. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task, and tells one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. This watching, this waiting, keep watch, keep alert. And that can be difficult for us because the truth is, especially in the COVID times, it just feels like we're carrying so much weight. I'm tired. 
I'm maybe a bit more sleepy. Everything, even those little things that we do just feels harder and the hard things feel impossible. You know, when I wake up, I still feel tired. I, I need help to really be awake, to be able to keep watch. I need the supernatural power of coffee, <laughs> of caffeine, just to almost be normal. You see, when Jesus is telling us to keep watch, and as we're being called to, to, to wake up, it means that we, we can't just keep falling asleep to all the stuff that's going on around us, to, to the reality that there is this empire all around us, that there is this sin infecting the world all around us. So we're invited to wake up to the reality of this empire and to also wake up to the reality of what God is doing all around us wake up. We, we might be tired. We might need help. We might need the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit, of Jesus walking alongside us, inside us, inspiring us forward, and maybe some coffee as well. We keep watch by waking up and then by keeping awake. Don't fall asleep. It's hard waiting. Be aware of how we can live now, be aware how we can live out God's truth now. Keeping awake means being aware of how we can spread that loving kindness, that, that very nature of God in our own lives. Wake up, keep awake, and then keep living in hope. What I love about the Advent story, what I love about that first Christmas story, is what we have is God sending and announcing his kingdom. The great kingdom of God comes with this mighty angel army, the greatest army that creation has ever known. And what do they do? They sing a song to a bunch of nobody shepherds. Not to the rich, not to the powerful, not to even the influencers of the world, but just to the least of these. An army shows up and sings a song. Hallelujah, the world is changing. This upside down kingdom of God is brought about often by small loving actions, by small loving people. It's this way of rebelling against the way of the empire by simply loving one person at a time, following the humble way of Jesus. Now, this will come as no surprise to anyone who knows me, but I am a big fan of Star Wars. In fact, I'm wearing, well, this Star Wars ugly Christmas sweater. <laughs> but what I love about Star Wars is it tells a story of, of the world. There's this great, powerful empire. There's this darkness over the galaxy. There's this feeling of hopelessness. What, what can we do against such a power? But then there's this new hope. Small people, small actions all over, rebelling against the empire. This seemingly impossible task of standing up to the most powerful force in the universe. And as it says in one of the movies, rebellion is built on hope. Rebellions are built on hope. Hope, hope of a new world, these dreams of a new world. You see, Jesus' promise to us is that this, the way with the empire, the way the world is working, this brokenness, this darkness, this hurt, this pain, is not how the world's meant to be. In the midst of the empire's darkness that we live in as well, hope is springing up all around us. And so God invites us to participate, to stay awake and to join him in what he's already doing all around us. God is inviting you to join the rebellion, the rebellion of Advent, this rebellion against the empire, to rebel against the gods of Mars and Mammon, the gods of violence, wealth and power and needing more that say it's us versus them for the humble way of Jesus. It says, the first will be last, the last will be first. Turn that other cheek. Love your enemies. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross.
and follow me. Let's love our enemies and change the world, loving one neighbor, one person at a time, so that through our lives and by our prayers, we would see God's kingdom come and God's will be done right here in our neighborhood. So friends, this Advent, I invite you to wake up. Wake up to the realities around us, the, the forces that are at work. Let's wake up to the reality of the world and keep awake to the reality that God is at work all around us. The kingdom of God is sprouting up all around us if we would just open our eyes and keep watch. And then to join the rebellion. Let's keep living in hope. Rebellions are built on hope. And our hope is in the one who overcomes death. Our hope is in the one who dies not in spite of what his enemies do to him, not because of what his enemies do, but who dies for the sake of his enemies. Our hope is in the one who loved you so much that he came down to change the world in the tiniest of packages as a little baby in this humble vessel just so that he could be with you, so he could show you the way, so he could show you that the world doesn't have to be this way, to show you that you are loved and you are made to be loved. This Advent, let's keep awake to what God is doing all around us. Receive the benediction. This Advent, may you wake up, keep awake, join the rebellion, keep living in hope. Amen.